Hey everyone, welcome back to The Coop with Meyer Hatchery, where we talk all things poultry in hopes of educating chicken keepers and inspiring future flock owners. I'm Amanda, and today we're talking to Lisa Steele, a fifth generation chicken keeper and well-known founder of Fresh Eggs Daily. Lisa's blog, books, and newest television show cover everything you need to know about chickens, gardening, crafts, and recipes. Meyer Hatchery has worked with Lisa developing three exclusive hybrid designer chickens created to Lisa's specifications. Meyer Hatchery also has the pleasure of being the primary underwriter for Welcome to My Farm, which will be launched on public television soon. We are so excited to chat today. So here to share her best advice and insight into her life on her farm is Lisa of Fresh Eggs Daily. All right, so good morning, Lisa. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Coop once again. It's always so nice to catch up and see what's happening in your exciting life. Hey, I'm happy to be back. Now, Meyer Hatchery and you partnered up to develop some exclusive hybrids. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what characteristics and traits you were looking for in your specific hybrids? That was really fun, something that I could not have foreseen. But yeah, being asked to kind of envision my perfect chicken and then Meyer within not too long, I mean, I think it was a year or two maybe, managed to come up with this sort of dream chicken, which, I mean, they sort of ended up looking like Dr. Seuss characters in a way. You know, like I wanted puffs. I wanted puffs on their heads, puffs on their cheeks. I wanted a spotted, something that had a little bit of color variation in it and that laid blue eggs. Although I think one dozen, one dozen is how it ended up coming to be. The, the steel egger lays blue eggs and the cookies and cream lays like a light brown creamish colored egg, I believe. Yeah, and it was really cool is not only did we have the standard size steel egger, we developed a bantam version of that because not everybody right. likes a bigger chicken. Some, you know, people that are raising chickens in the city want something a little smaller in size. So that bantam gives you the same great option in the exclusive steel agar. That's yeah, they're and they're both super cute. You know, people will post pictures and they tag me and the chicks are adorable, but they grow up to be these really kind of funny looking adult chickens and um, people are loving them. I've been reading some of the reviews on your website and it's interesting to, to hear what people think of them. Yeah, I recently read one where uh, she didn't know really what to expect, but she really wanted to let us know that they were the most friendly, docile, social chicken she's ever had, something she didn't expect. And she wanted us and that's to know that. <laughs> funny because that's not really... That's, I mean, that's obviously a desirable trait, but that's not really something that we were specifically going for. Right. I was laughing at the one that said something about, you know, beautiful chicken lays beautiful eggs and gets along really well with my cat. <laughs> hey, that's a positive. <laughs> <laughs> now you've been around chickens basically your whole life, but did you ever think at this point in your life, you would eventually be authoring multiple books along with hosting a TV show on your farm? No, absolutely not. I mean, I've always been a big reader and I love books. And so that sort of makes sense. But I definitely could not have envisioned this. And I didn't plot any of this, really. I think Meyer was actually one of my very, very first sponsors on my blog, maybe back in like 2011 or 2012. And at that point, I didn't really have a vision of it turning into a business really. I mean, I kind of thought, well, maybe my blog can support itself and I can work with some companies that I already love and use their products and all that. But no, this all just sort of was a a path that I didn't, definitely didn't expect. And especially the cookbook, you know, just moving into the foodie world this past year has just been really a lot of fun. It just seems like your path was just laid out so wonderfully for you. And it just, all the pieces have just come together and you are living the chicken lady dream. <laughs> now, yeah, I got to thank the chickens. <laughs> yeah, definitely. They, they've turned you into this um, Martha Stewart of chickens, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, 
talk about, you know, let's talk a little bit about your public television show. Um, some people may not know, but um, you host a TV show on your farm called Welcome to My Farm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And the question I really want to ask is, are your birds naturals for the camera? <laughs> of course. So it probably was, I don't know, five or six years ago by now. And I had done a little TV, local TV appearances and brought a chicken and, and that kind of thing, you know, been on the Good Morning Maine or whatever. And, you know, I thought it would be really fun to do a TV show that sort of focused around my chickens and centered on my chickens. And I contacted the local CW and the manager, station manager happened to have chickens and loved the idea. So we developed a show. They had their own production team. And I think it was on for, I don't know, maybe one or two seasons. And then the station got bought out. They basically had a change of personnel. So this, the show moved to NBC here in Maine and I believe was on for another two seasons maybe and then at that point American Public Television was interested which you know would mean nationwide coverage not just here in Maine and so for the last I guess year or so we've been working on taking those episodes that we had and sort of reworking them into one cohesive season for our public television so it's going to start airing April 1st nationwide I believe over 200 stations have already picked it up and by summer it should move to create TV. So it will be on same time, same date all over the country. For now, each public television station can choose when they're going to air it. So they're going to have a zip code locator so people can find out when it's on. But I do have to say thanks to Meyer Hatchery for being a supporter from the start and, and really allowing me to do this because without sponsors for a television show obviously you don't have a show but I think we're all super excited to see what happens when it goes nationwide absolutely I, I'm just I'm really excited and as a mom I have a, you know I have a, a five-year-old and then I have some teenagers and when we sit down at the end of the day sometimes it's really hard to find a television show that kind of meets all of the age groups needs that's family friendly that, you know, I always like to learn a little bit of something to where I feel a little less guilty about being in front of the television. <laughs> so just to have the opportunity to have welcome to my farm in the near future as one of our, you know, watching options. I think that's going to be really neat, especially because, you know, we homestead and my girls do 4-H. So it's just another great opportunity to learn and to see uh, what's going on in Lisa Steele's world. I hope people like it. I, I don't think that you have to have chickens to enjoy it because especially in some of the later episodes, I was going to a Christmas tree farm. I was going to a strawberry farm and learning how maple syrup was made. So it's almost like National Geographic meets Travel Channel. Meets, you know, it's a little bit of everything. There's gardening in it. There's recipes in it. You know, so I think it will appeal. And to answer your, your actual question, the filming never took longer because the chickens failed to hit their mark or do what they were supposed to do. It was usually me messing up my lines or forgetting <laughs> what I was supposed to say. They were, they were really wonderful. I mean, once they got used to the film crew being around and they learned that the film crew came with treats. I was just going to say, did they get it. treats? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> So other than, you know, having to redo your lines several times, were there any other challenges that came with hosting the show? It was a lot of fun. I mean, I just really enjoyed it. I think because we are in Maine trying to time things, you know, we wanted to have a few episodes from each season so people could see. I mean, there are people who have never seen snow. Right. You know, so we thought it was important that because Maine is all about the season. So we wanted some shows that feature the foliage and some that featured summer and winter. So trying to do all that. Um, I think the biggest challenge, though, was because it was a fairly small production. I not only had to come up with the episodes, what we were going to do for each segment, get all the props, all the food, my what I was going to wear, hair, makeup craft services because I had to feed the crew so it was sort of a uh, I mean maybe we had five people involved you know when you look at a tv show and the credits roll there's like you know 35 40 people you know I didn't have a stunt double so I did all my own stunts <laughs> those stunts I can't wait to see some of those <laughs> 
no, but it was, it was a lot of fun, but it, it was a lot. I mean, it definitely, and it disrupted our life sort of to have, you know, a film crew in our kitchen setting up lights and, and all that. So, um, yeah, but it was fun. I have to have everything nice and clean and spotless for the perfect shot. And because we live there, you know, right. they, they would have to set up everything and lighting a set can take forever and then we shot something and then we'd have to take it all down because I had to cook dinner you know and they'd come back the next day and have to do the same thing all over again but I mean by the end we sort of had streamlined things more and figured things out got into your groove Mm -hmm. now what would you say you're most proud of as far as welcome to my farm I think just the fact I mean, public television is is pretty picky about what they air. And, you know, they have Emeril and Martha and that guy that paints the happy trees. You know, they've got some really quality programming. I don't think it really has sunk in yet. It won't start airing till April 1st, but I don't think it really has sunk in yet that the show is actually going to be national. And so many people mm-hmm. are going to be watching you in their living rooms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to be in everybody's house very soon. <laughs> and I don't like to watch. I mean, you could ask my husband, you know, because when it was on here in Maine on Sunday mornings, you know, we'd be flipping around. And if he stopped on that channel and I saw him, I was like, take it off, take it off, take it off, take it off. I don't want to see it. I just like, I get very uncomfortable. We and, and we are our own worst critic. I know I, you know, I do a lot of videos for the hatchery and, you know, it's really, it really is hard to you know, look back at what you've recorded and you're like, oh, I could have said that better. or Oh, I could have done my hair differently. But um, yeah, we're our own worst critic. (laughs) We are. We are. And I I think people are going to like it. And I'm I'm excited because I have not seen the new episodes because the two seasons we had had either two or three different film crews and the openings were different and things changed over the course of the show. And for this, they wanted to make it one cohesive eight episode season. So I haven't even seen the final episode. So I'm kind of excited about that. I watch them on my phone first. So they're small. (laughs) Your own little secret viewing space. (laughs) Now you mentioned the kitchen and your seventh book, Fresh Eggs Daily Cookbook, over 100 fabulous recipes to use in unexpected ways is hot off the presses. What inspired you to publish a cookbook? It's something that had sort of been like a pipe dream of mine. I always wanted to be a food blogger. And just realistically, I think especially these days, unless you are a professional photographer, recipe developer, recipe tester, the the space is so saturated. And the few recipes that I've posted on my blog, they don't rank on Google at all. So no one really sees them. And it was just something that I enjoyed doing. But Realistically, I I knew that I would never be able to break into the the culinary or food arena. And I really, I mean, I did want to write a cookbook too, but again, I was like, this is never going to happen. So I pitched it to my chicken editor who I had done four books with, and he kept turning down the idea and just wanted me to write more chicken books. And I really didn't have anything else to say. I mean, I think I've said everything that I can say about (laughs) chickens. So finally... I guess it was right before COVID started, he did get it approved for me to write a cookbook, but they were a medium-sized publisher. It would have been paperback, sort of the next in the line of my chicken books. And it really wasn't the cookbook that I had dreamed of. If I was going to write a cookbook, I wanted it to be the cookbook of my dreams. I wanted it to be hardcover with a large publisher with great distribution and a huge budget. Oh, I would have had to take my own photos and stuff too. And I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a food photographer. So I got out of my contract with them, which was super nice of them to do and hired an agent and he pitched and Harper Collins was interested, which was, is still, I mean, when I got off the phone and told my husband that we had a deal from Harper Collins, <laughs> we had an immediate happy hour. We Did like, you pinch yourself a few times? <laughs> is this really happening? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. But they, I mean, I, I interviewed a ton of agents, probably six or seven agents, and some of them wanted to do farm to table. They didn't understand the whole egg concept or just weren't interested. And this this agent that I ended up going with got it right away. He got super excited. He wrote like a 40 page proposal. And same with Harper Collins. I think two other publishers did make offers, but I didn't feel like they really got my vision. 
And I really did not want to do a farm to table. I truly believed that it could be an egg centric cookbook because I had looked at what was out there in the market. I owned a bunch of egg cookbooks and I felt like there was a need for another one. And they were just wonderful to work with. Being so large, I thought I would lose control because with all my books at some point, I lost control over the title or the cover or what was included. And you have to figure they know best. This is their, their job, your editor. But it wasn't exactly the book that I had envisioned. And Harper Collins kept me involved right through to the very end. I had input into everything, which was really great. And I mean, I'm thrilled. I love the book. It's beautiful. I, I just, I'm so pleased with it. And I'm so happy that I sort of stepped outside of what I thought would be possible and gave it a try. And it was during COVID. So I spent basically COVID writing a cookbook, which the, the timing couldn't have been better. You used your time wisely. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I have to say, I had the pleasure of being able to whip up one of your um, extra additional recipes, the pumpkin cheesecake. Amazing. It did not last long. I don't even think it made it to the refrigerator in my house. (laughs) It was so good. And I had never made a cheesecake ever before in my life. And I love baking and cooking. It just, I've never done a cheesecake oh, and it was so funny. easy to follow it was just so yummy everybody nobody complained <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that because I mean cheesecakes can be tricky and that one definitely isn't a basic cheesecake because you've got your two batters mm-hmm. but so I'm so glad to hear that I've made that for Thanksgiving I mean when we were living in Virginia I made that because we would always go somewhere and I always brought it so I've been making probably at least for 10 years and it's so good so good <laughs> So what would you say your favorite recipe in the cookbook is? It's so hard because all of them either are things that I make regularly or things I wanted to try specifically for the cookbook. And I had to narrow down. I mean, I have a folder, probably four inches thick of recipes that didn't make the cut. So these really are my favorite or things that I thought really had to be included, like a lemon meringue pie, you know, a basic pudding. There are just certain things that use eggs, meringues, things like that. I'd say savory is definitely Egg Benedict, which made the cover, which wasn't my initial choice. That was actually one of the picks that they presented to us out of like eight photos, um, but it's, it's very appropriate. I love Eggs Benedict. Um, and Sweet Side, Creme Brulee. I really, I just like traditional, I don't, you know, I think if you have good fresh eggs, you don't need to do a whole lot to them to make them better. So I like recipes that have just very simple, basic ingredients. And there's, I don't think there's anything like a a great homemade creme brulee or hollandaise sauce. And you know what I love is that you kind of touch on everything. It's not when you think, I think many people think eggs, they think breakfast, but it's so much more than that. You have recipes for drinks and appetizers and desserts and yes, breakfast and all the savory (laughs) stuff. I mean, you touch on everything. So it's, it, you just make it your own and you've got something for any time of the day and any occasion. So very well done. It is a beautiful book. The pictures are absolutely stunning and it just makes me want to get in the kitchen more. Oh, I'm so glad. And I hope everybody feels that way. I think that we do think of eggs for breakfast. And when I was first was putting the book together, I told my editor, I just wanted two chapters, savory and sweet, because I didn't like the idea of having to put things in a breakfast category or brunch category. And of course they said I couldn't do that. So I had to make more chapters. (laughs) Um, But you know, there's nothing wrong with having an omelet for dinner with a salad or sometimes we'll just have fried eggs and bacon and toast for dinner. So I, just because something's in the breakfast chapter doesn't mean that you can't eat it for dinner or vice versa. There's a breakfast pizza. Well, it's a bacon and eggs pizza. That's really nice for breakfast. Oh yeah. Oh, I can have eggs any time of the day. And as a busy mom, we do breakfast a lot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. And I think we just need to encourage others to get in the kitchen. So let's do a giveaway. I think we should give away one of your Fresh Eggs Daily cookbooks, um, a signed cookbook. Let's just make it extra special and we'll get it signed. Um, And then Meyer Hatchery is also going to throw in a $25 gift certificate. So not only are you going to get a cookbook, but you're also going to get some money to spend on supplements or more birds, feed, whatever you want. (laughs) Love Um, it. 
But in order to enter, you're going to have to fill out a form that we're going to include in the show notes. And there's going to be a secret word. And Lisa, what is our secret word to enter? The secret word of the day is Miranda. Miranda. So go to the show notes below when we are finished with the show and you can enter to win your signed Fresh Eggs Daily Cookbook along with a $25 Meyer Hatchery gift certificate. Everybody likes something free, right? And that'll just that encourage, encourage more cooking. And we'll just have to see all those recipes shared on social media. Yes, absolutely. Anybody who does have the cookbook or buys the cookbook and makes anything, definitely make sure you tag me at Fresh Eggs Daily so I can share. I love seeing what people pick out to make. Oh yeah, so fun. Now I do want to touch a little bit. I mean, you've got books, uh, but you also have supplements that Meyer Hatchery carries. Um, And I did want to touch on that because we just started a new subscription service to where people could um, receive those supplements on a monthly basis automatically. So take advantage of that, get on our website, go to the subscriptions category, and you could take full advantage of Lisa's line of supplements. Lisa, what would you say would be the supplement you really just can't live without? I mean, they're all wonderful and all have great benefits. They do. And I, I think what people misunderstand about them is that they all were designed to work together. So I add them all to my chicken feed every day. You know, there's prebiotics, probiotics, which helps the prebiotics work. There's flax, which adds the uh, omega threes. But I think the one, because I do get a lot of people saying, I can't add them all right now, which is the one. And I would say the brewer's yeast with garlic. If you have ducks, especially, they need that extra niacin that's in the brewer's yeast. But even if you just have chickens in your flock, brewer's yeast is great for them. It has really great health benefits, nutrients and all that. And the garlic is such a great immune system booster, overall health elixir. So I would would go with the brewer's yeast and garlic if you just choose one. But I do think that the benefits are you know, like tenfold if you add them all together. And I add them from my day old baby chicks. I'll just put a little sprinkle on their food of each of them, mostly just to get them used to the taste. So as they're adults, they are used to that in their feed. But I mean, the sea kelp kelp has great vitamins in it. And it's all really, really good for baby chicks too. So I feed it day one, all the way through. And I really think that it keeps my chickens healthy, you know, doing that preventive type natural supplement stuff. I do actually have some other products that we're hoping to add to the line this summer, which is super exciting. That is exciting. And they do come in two sizes. So if you have a small flock, there's a small canister, but the larger canisters are much more economical and they last, I don't know, there's an expiration date on all of them, but I think they last like 18 months as long as, you know, they don't get wet. So the larger size is definitely more economical but I love the idea of the subscription. So you don't forget and you don't run out. Absolutely. I know I busy people. I mean, we all live, most of us live super busy lives these days. So one less thing to think about, and it just shows up on your doorstep, ready to be put into your feed. Um, Just a great option. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us once again here on the Coop podcast. It is always a pleasure catching up with you. If you have one bit of advice for our listeners today, what would that be? Whether it be poultry related or, you know, homesteading adventures. Cause I mean, you've gone from just raising chickens to now you're this big business woman with all these wonderful things <laughs> happening. So what do you have for our listeners today? My advice is get chickens. That's where it starts, right? I mean, really? Yeah. Get chickens. If you're thinking about it, check with your t- town, make sure you can, and then head over to Meyer Hatchery. The website is just, I mean, it's like a candy store, you know, just looking at the different breeds and they have photos of the chicks and the eggs and all that. So do a little window shopping, do a little research, but get chickens. Wonderful. Or ducks or geese. (laughs) Get poultry. How about get poultry? (laughs) Yeah, get poultry. Get something with some feathers. (laughs) Sounds good to me. And with that, we thank you for listening to The Coop. Be sure to subscribe. And if you'd be so kind, drop us a review. Have a poultry-related question or topic you'd like us to cover? We want to hear from you. Send us an email to podcast at meyerhatchery.com. <laughs>